97 style antenna in a CKU switchable configuration. We have the RF equipment for both the C and KU band installed, but the feed required to be manually replaced. Here we're shown in the C band configuration with the C band feed illuminating the entire 2.4 meter reflector. So to switch it to KU, the technician would have to come up into the radome, remove this feed, install the KU band feed, connect the waveguide plumbing, switch a few cables in the back, and then rebalance the antenna. So it would require a skilled technician and at least a half a day worth of work to switch from C band to KU band. What we've done now is permanently install a KU band feed and feed horn and introduce a movable subreflector. So drivers, go ahead and switch it to the secondary antenna position. When you want to be in KU band mode, you simply select it like that, and in that period of time, the subreflector swings into position, and this feed now illuminates the subreflector, which then bounces down to the main reflector at the same angles that it would have if it were sitting up here in the back. Another advantage of this program is that the shape of this subreflector, or excuse me, the shape of this feed horn is a very um, large F over D range. So instead of being flat, like the original scalar plate was, it's a deep cup, and that greatly improves the cross pole performance. So we actually, and we get slightly, even slightly better gain because we're illuminating the reflector more efficiently. Well now, in order, we also, so we not only get fast switchy, we actually get improved KU band performance. Now, the key, one of the key issues here is this subreflector needs to be precisely positioned every time it comes back into position. When it's out of the way, it doesn't care, but in the KU band position, it has to be precisely aligned. So we have a precision mechanical stop in there that the motor drives against all the time. It has a very fine pitch set screw that lets you adjust it to the right position. And in order to prevent from damaging that stop or damaging the gear train motors, we've installed limit switches. So as the reflector comes into position, right about right there, it hits the limit switch and that drops the power to the motor by a factor of four, preserving the integrity of the hard limit stop and the gear train.